Uh, I'm just going to grab Emma and we're going to play the Saturday Guard. So this is kind of one of the ones that um, is coming up a lot more in the no gi with the leg entanglement. Um, it's also good for deep half and elevating your partners, etc. So the part we're going to start on is um, a work or non-committal, um, kind of like most relationships. So what we do from here is we're going to start with non-committal is I'm pretty much just non-committal and I'm waiting for my partner to come to me. So the choices are my partner normally controls my legs, my hands, my head, but I'm kind of non-committal. If I want the head control, I kind of put my head a little bit more forward, over top. Turn my body, drag the arm, come to the side back position. And again, so the non-committal is, what I mean is I'm not hand fighting, as like I'm here, I put my chin in front. So as Emily tries to a head grab to get the head control, it's here. So over and under. The part that I see people have mistakes is, is they lean backward to try and drag their partner. Once my back hits the ground, I can't sweep or move. So it's really important that I engage my core and I keep my core in, uh, into a locked position. So she grabs the head over the top, some snake bite arm bar come over the top. What I'm doing is I'm dragging my, my hand to where my elbow is and I'm turning to the side to get to this position. Make sure my knee and my elbow make contact on the side. So if Emma does try to pull the arm out or sit up, I've got a really nice contact point on it. Off the side, just nice and light. So as Emma grabs, over, under, I'm pulling and dragging. Make sure that the elbow and the knee make contact nice and tight from here. This means that if Emma does try to move away, I've got a really good contact point from here. And most important is it allows me to drag her so I don't lose the control. One more time. So from the seated guard, I play non-committal. I put my head slightly forward. As it doesn't matter what happened. As I grab one and two over the top and underneath. This means that if she tries to pull the arm, lift the arm up or down or left or right, I have good controls on it. I'm not trying to drag, so I'm turning my body to drag the arm and get to the commitment point. So my elbow and my knee are touching. Try and get your head over the top. That way she does try to stand up, whatever. I've got the control over and it'll give me the ability to start to take the back as well. Okay, one more time. So non-committal. And D, as she gets the head control, we're going to go to the head control. So over and under. Turn my body, drag, knee and elbow from here. Nice and easy, guys. Okay, one, two, three. I get this quite a fair bit off the rest up. I'm going to go in a little bit of detail so everyone understands why and, and most importantly um, how it works. Just grab my kit down here, please. So on your, uh, on your knees. So it's going, uh, it, it's non committal, so I'm kind of sitting in the zone, nine out of ten times to get the head control. It's really important that if my chins to my chest, they get the control, where my shoulders are forward, it's really hard for them to pull the head down. So if my chins to my chest, they get better control. If my, if my shoulders are forward, they put my head down and I've got a pretty good control from here. I'm not gonna be sitting here going to see who's tougher, because I'd win, but, no, I'm joking, but I don't wanna have this contest where we're here. Okay, so over and under, so it's a nice little grip. Remember, what we're gonna do is we're trying to turn the corner. So I'm throwing my body around, putting it down, I make sure my hand's on the back side, not on the front side, so on the outside from here. This is one of the new things that I've been playing around with and it, it's been a, a really interesting um, a really interesting tool that I've been uh, experimenting with. What I've found is that if I try and wrap the choke up from here, I lose a lot of the control on the body that can uh, walk backwards, spin out and hand fight. So what I've been doing for me is I'm going to put the hand on the top of the head this way. Now, think about it from here is I've got the control on the head. All I'm going to do it's really easy. I'm going to start to drag my elbow, my right elbow, the bottom elbow, as far backwards as I can. I drop my left knee forward. It's going to go slow. So I'm not cupping from here. I drop my left elbow backwards. I cup my left knee. <laughs> that was actually coming on. Yeah, it, it's kind of, it comes on pretty fast. The, the, Thing about it is, um, I was actually off a cross face that we're working. I was actually Professor Tony, I work on the cross face. Is that instead of trying to turn your punt, flare your elbow to get the head turned away. And when I started playing with the same concept in different positions, this was one of the positions that came up, and I went, like, oh, why do I turn the head away? And the two people I did two in the round, both kind of like straight up, they're, they're tapping pretty straight away. So shoulders back, non-committal, grabs the head, 
under over. Now remember, is I'm turning my body and I'll throw my hand to the back side. I'll make this the web so I'm jamming in me nice and tight. Hand comes under this way. So watch, my left knee drives in, my elbow drives back. The choke pretty much on straight away. Um, I, I'm, what I see is the more I'm trying to drag him into me, so I'm trying to go out and then I'm creating space for them to fall into. My knee by turning this way forces them into the valley and the choke comes on relatively fast. Second thing about it is I do get the better control than trying to chase where I commit both my hands to the choke and I'm trying to use my core to balance. Right, and he can move. So slow motion again. The key is the hand position. Uh, uh, well, actually, the key is the hand position to put my elbow position in place. So when we're here, shoulders and head, so I've got a nice grip over under, so it has to be this way. I'm turning, flick, here. So fingers facing, not here. Fingers face this way. My knee drives in, and all I'm doing is I'm lifting up. Turn. Fingers are facing me yeah. or the other? Just young, no, baby. How's your neck, by the way? For now, okay. So, <laughs> so uh, what's going is I'll make sure that when they've got the position I have, I have my shoulders back. My shoulders are forty, gets better control. Under over. From here, nice night. Is I turn the corner, throw, and this one takes my hand has to go backwards behind him. Now, here, drop my knee in, and I'm pulling the elbow up. So that's pretty much I drag him exactly where I want him to be. That's really hard to resist. Okay, one, two, three. That's a stick. Yeah, it's different. So, just, there's a couple of parts. Everyone's got the, the major concept right, which is really good. So, off the head control from here, head control. Uh, one, two, twist to the side, drag. Come over the top from here, right? So, once I'm here, if my knees out, there's nothing stopping my palm from moving left or to the right, right? So I don't want him to flatten me out. Because he flattens me out when I'm here, I'm gonna end up on my back and he's gonna be in a better control position than me. So this is why that left knee has to squeeze in to force him to go the way I need him to go. So the part that I'm seeing some of you, and not all of you, just some of you have issues, so you've gone here, boom, okay, lock, lock this in now. So I'm forcing him, and that's why this is here, so I'm forcing him offside now. If I go for this now, my, my weight's come up, it's gonna drive into me, I'm gonna end up onto, onto my back because I don't have any locking mechanic. So once I'm here, hands on the outside, here, grip, so I'm lifting him up. But, but my knee's driving in. So as I'm driving in, look, look, look. Puts him into the back, hooks in, hand fight. Once we're here, the fight's pretty much done. So you can't fall to your back. You have to have constant pressure on your partner to turn them the other. So uh, like, like I'm trying to twist the head one way and trying to turn the hips the opposite way. So my shin's trying to kick the body one way, but I'm trying to pull the head the opposite way. So again, so slow motion is small details, cup and go, turn, grip, elbows offside. So that means that I'm driving into my partner. My hands on the inside means he's driving into me. Does everyone understand that concept? So if I'm here, to, yeah, right, so it's easy where if I'm here, I've got the better. Okay, nice. Now, that's exactly what I want to get to the control position. So it's really important that I keep them offside and get that reaction where he either tries to drive back into me, which would be the perfect reaction that I want. I'm going to get the best results from that, and that will be one of the most common ones. The second common one is that they're going to try and stand up. As they try and stand up, I'm reaching the head, so they'll kind of make him pull forward into the, into the back control. One, two, three. Okay, here's that, just grab Micah. And we start from the seat of guy again. Um, so he's on his knees. And um, I've engaged, but I'm non committal. So once again, is the, the concept on this one is I'm not going after him at the moment, I'm kind of sitting. So uh, he's either going to, like, instead of going for the head, he's going to try and push my knees or whatever like that, like, like to get the control. So make sure that you have, make sure that you have your, your, um, your feet, make sure your feet are engaged, make sure they're not lazy. If your feet are engaged, you have some contact. If your feet are lazy, if I, if I want to hold my partner here, if I want to move, I bring my feet in. So, feet in. Now, it's exactly the same concept. So, as my partner goes to grab, it's the same thing. I'm here and drag. Arms on the inside. Okay, I want to take away from my partner. So, it's, just, it's, it's, yeah. 
take the arm on the inside. Make sure that everyone grabs um, with their left hand, just so everyone gets a practice. Shove in the belly. Doesn't matter if it's between my legs or over the leg, it doesn't make any difference. This is the issue. So hold, cover it up, same deal. Underneath, flare, very much better finish your partner. Come here. Alright, if you need to, you can drop them back in the valley, but from my experience with this one, you don't need to finish it much more. Hands on. Two, so it's like flip it, in, close the gap, make sure I just get my hands driving into my partner, so I'm not having my hand here, hands driving into my partner, get my grip, come over, hold, exactly the same concept, but because the hands underneath them, they don't have a close, you're going to find this a lot easier to tip them into the valley of death, into the back control, and again, so much. Sorry. Up, shove that upwards, so me. Drag it in. Up, close the space. Back. Make sure my hands out. Okay? But make sure my chin's over so I can't control the shoulder. Pull. Let's have a shot. One, two, three. This is just habitual, so it's nothing wrong, it's just habitual, so it, it's habits, and there's nothing wrong with it if you're going to do your standard back choke. Nothing wrong with it at all. I don't, I'm not saying don't do this, I'm just saying understand what you're sacrificing or what you're compromising by doing it. Alright, so, one, two, put them in the valley of death, get control, and now I'm back side. And, see if you're, and they're cupping the hands here. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll lose that control. If you believe you can honestly get the choke from there, do it. But I don't believe you're in, a, you're in a position that you're going to hit it enough times to make it worth losing your control. So what I mean by that is flick it, form, control, here, hand comes under. So if I, if I commit, I'm losing the control on my partner's here, and the instant that I cut my hands together, I've lost control on the head as well. You're much better off driving your knee in, your, your neck across it. Okay, feet over or out, look. Drop them in the valley. Once you're here, now you can put your hands together. So, the, the next part about why I do this is, if I'm here and I drag it, whether it goes between my legs and the we have two my legs in, next. If I'm here and I get this, and let's just say for some reason that I'm too far forward, like I'm, I haven't come around the backside and I'm losing the position a bit. Like most people are going to go, oh, I need to drag him forward. What I'm going to do is say, if Mr. Young slowly starts moving backwards, I'm just going to drag. So move backwards, move backwards, move backwards. <laughs> I'm still going to get the control because I've got the, I'm, I'm underneath the chin. So the instant that you kind of go, I'm losing the bit, and you let go of your control on the chin, you're going to lose a lot more than just the control. So instead of trying to pull it, raise it over more so it kind of locks the chin into position and holds him in position. Does that make sense? And that is your dragon arm the leg closer behind the hip more so. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm trying to, like, the, the part that, um, so where he are and he are, is thing so, so the more that I'm dragging this in, yeah, that this, this leg here, my, my left, it's been nice. So, here, think about this way, is what, what's this leg? To help drag him. So now, totally free butt. Now we can have some fun. <laughs> One, two, three. Thank you. Up again, please. Uh, this one's the next one, and um, once again, kind of playing the non-committal. And what my partner does is start hand fighting, so we're, we're kind of getting the hand fight. So the, the way that, well, they try to arm drag me. So, so on, on the concept on this is, I always want to cross my hands over. Uh, one of the biggest things I see, when people get hold of the wrists, 
um, and they got really good control of the wrist, like, like grab the wrist, and I'm, I'm trying to like hand fight. Um, one of the things that I got taught to do was, whenever you're here, if I'm ever taking my hands high, I'm giving my partner the space to get to the inside position on me. So if I kind of go, ha ha, and he just goes, wow, thank you very much. So the, the inside position isn't the best thing. Secondly, about I don't want my back on the ground. So if I'm going, ha ha, I'm, I'm giving him what he wants as well. So one of the things that they get a really good grip was to actually start to just cross your hands over. And if they're really strong, and I'm, like, I'm having trouble, okay, instead of trying to cross your hands, start to move your body to get the, the crossover as well. So I don't want to be kind of going, oh, he's strong, ha ha, and then double arm hooks. I don't want to kind of go, they're really, I can do that, because ah, ah, you're just going to go, well, if he's going back, I'll just keep pushing forwards, and I'll end up in a bad position as well. So for me, what it was was, we get to hand fight, um, and he knows I kind of want the neck or want the head control. So I cross it over, guess what? <laughs> Pretty much in the same position that we are in before. Back stroke, here, hand comes under. Flare my elbow, drive my leg in. Now, the part. So we're here, hand fight, okay. So cross it over, boom, hand position come off. The part that I want to concentrate on now is I drive in, hand comes under, lift the head. Now once we're here and the weight comes off this leg here, kick that leg out, drop me in the valley. And now I can lock it up. So this is going to give me a far better control as well. So for me, just think about this is, uh, sorry Micah, if we're hand fighting and he has control over me, anytime I'm opening up, I'm giving him inside position under hooks. Anytime I'm putting my hands down, I'm pushing my back onto the ground. So from here to the best way, cross, inside. So I put one hand low, one hand high, control. I pull the hand away, wrist grab, come over, I'm in the position. Drive in, hand comes under. As I'm pulling, as I'm driving, I'm kicking. As I'm pulling, as I'm driving, I'm kicking. That'll turn. Lock it up. Backside. <laughs> One, two, three. Okay. So the marker, the leg position. Uh, so off the hand fight, once again, one, two, three, come into position. So think about this is, I really want to kind of come up and over. So I'm going to hit the scope out and make sure that there's contact, my, my elbow, my knee, so there's minimal space. Um, I can even, like if my partner's got uh, a good bait, I do a small hip escape to make him close to come under. If I, if I need, I do some more hip scope. This is up. See my left foot, the one that my toes are moving. Okay. I'm not trying to lift it. I'm not hook sweeping. The part that's it, they're trying to lift. I'm not, I'm not lifting. Here. So drive this in the end. So drive, drive, drive to out. Now what I'm doing is, once it's here, I just simply not drive the hooks away so I split his knees up. Me personally, I have something I do, which I'll bring this under. Hook, and a hook onto the back. <laughs> so he'll got to start to worry about this. Thank you. The instant that you start to turn over that, you have to expose your, your neck to me. So I'm either going to calf lock your muscle lock you down there, which it's just a muscle lock, but I'm going to choke you up the top. I know, I'd rather get choked unconscious so I don't have to feel the pain of a muscle lock, but you know, so from here. So here. Okay. So, one, two, hip escape, under. So watch, okay, stand, see the hook, push me in the barrel. One, two. One, two, three. So I will do more details on this on Thursday, guys. On the legs on Thursday, more details on the legs.